Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series where we bring you bite-sized ISO videos. In this series, we'll talk about the updates to the ISO 27001 framework issued in the 2022 update. We'll cover all of the Annex A controls, both the new controls as well as the existing ones to make sure that you have everything you need to implement them effectively in your organization. In this video, we'll discuss information security event management. The first control is 5.25, Assessment and Decision on Information Security Events. This control reads, the organization should assess information security events and decide if they are to be categorized as information security incidents. We have a lot of things that happen in our day-to-day -day jobs that could be potentially construed as information security incidents. You could have an email that's sent to the incorrect individual. You could have something more egregious, such as a malicious email being sent to you, where maybe you click on something or just simply opening the email is, is something you're not sure if that's an incident or not. Essentially, you need to enable your workforce to report things when in doubt. Essentially, everything that they think could possibly be an incident should be reported. And then a qualified team should be able to assess and decide if this truly is a security incident. If it is, the next control will come into play. 5.26, response to information security incidents. This control reads, information security incidents should be responded to in accordance with the documented procedures. When the team that is making the assessment receives an information security incident and decides it truly is an incident, they need to either act upon it themselves or triage it to the appropriate party to respond. Response can look like a lot of different things depending on your organization, your needs, the data that may be in question, but essentially whatever the response should be for your organization, it needs to be documented and the team that is actually executing that response needs to have that documentation readily available so they can follow a consistent process in responding to potential incidents. The next control is 5.27, learning from information security incidents. So this is a post-mortem look back at incidents that have occurred and understanding what we could have done better or how we may be able to prevent it in the future. So the control says, knowledge gained from information security incidents should be used to strengthen and improve the control environment. The biggest thing I see as a downfall of implementing this control is the fact that you are not able to look back upon your incidents in an easy, in a easily accessible way. So make sure that you're structuring the data of the actual incident tracking in a way that can be looked back on in an aggregate fashion. So if you can't sit down and say, show me my incidents over the last 12 months and maybe the various classification levels those, those incidents fell into, then I might sit down and consider redesigning how you're tracking incidents. The last one is 5.28. This, this uh, control is collection of evidence. This control is intended to make sure that organizations are maintaining all of the necessary things they need to to ensure evidence integrity, especially in the case of legal action. So the control says the organization should establish and implement procedures for the identification, collection, acquisition, and preservation of information from information security incidents. Now, some organizations are fortunate enough to have individuals who are qualified to collect and handle evidence in a way that is uh, acceptable by a court, for example. Most organizations are not, though. If you are an organization that does not have trained and qualified people, you do not necessarily need to hire someone for this. There are firms that you can keep on retainer that can come in and help you with this if and when you need it. So just consider the best option for your organization. The next control is 6.8. This might sound similar to 5.25, but it's a little bit different. So 6.8 is information security event reporting. So this control is focused on the mechanism of reporting potential security events. So it says the organization should provide a mechanism for personnel to report observed or suspected information security events through appropriate channels in a timely manner. The best way to test this is go to an absolute random person within the organization and say, if you thought that you had a security incident right now, what would you do? And if they can't crisply and cleanly answer that and tell you exactly how they would report it, you're probably either in need of some training, some more clear documentation or something. But everyone in the organization should know exactly how to report a security event or a security incident that they may think has occurred. Even if it's not something that will be classified as an incident, they should still know exactly how to report it. So make sure that that documentation is made clear throughout the organization. The next control is logging. The control states logs that record activities, exceptions, faults, and other relevant events should be produced, protected, and stored and analyzed. 
So what this means is that all of the logs from things such as a security information event monitoring tool or uh, other tools that may be looking at all of the various activities in your environment should be not only producing those logs and those being stored somewhere, but they should also be protected from people who may be able to come in and edit, change, or delete them, as well as analyzed. Analyzed is a really big word here because if you're not doing anything with the logs, meaning you're not triggering alerts, you're not doing periodic reviews, the logs are not being actioned in some way, that's a problem. You need to make sure that whatever logs you're collecting are being looked at in some form or fashion, even if it's through simply automation and alerting. Make sure you spend time tuning those tools to alert you on things that truly matter. The next control is 8.16, monitoring activities. This sounds like logging, but it's a little different. This one says network systems and applications should be monitored for anomalous behavior and appropriate actions taken to evaluate potential information security incidents. So the control before is simply talking about the handling and the controls around the logs themselves to make sure that the logs are protected. This control, which is a new control by the way, it's a new control to the standard, is focused on ensuring that you have adequate monitoring activities in place. What this means is this could be more than just tools, these could be people and processes as well. So make sure that your network systems and applications are adequately monitored for information security incidents. External penetration tests are a great way to do this. Leverage your external penetration testing partner and have them let you know when they're going to do something that should set off alarms. And if you don't have any set off, then there's something that needs to be remediated there. The next control is 8.17, clock synchronization. This control uh, is very simple. You make sure that all of the clocks of your various systems are synchronized. Uh, some of the easiest, most consistent things I see for this are pointing your systems to an NTP server using uh, Microsoft default time server, uh, things like that. So make sure that your clocks are synchronized across your systems. Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series. If you'd like to learn more about updates to the framework, check out a link in the description below to a white paper we've written. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content like this. Look for us on LinkedIn, and also check out our website at risk360.com to learn more about how Risk360 may be able to help you achieve your security and compliance goals.